After playing Watch Dogs Legion, I can say that there's a lot going on in this game, and there was plenty that I discovered that I wish I had known when I started the game. And those are the things I'm going to share in this video. So without any further ado, I hope you'll join me as I share 10 essential tips that I think will help you get the most out of Watch Dogs Legion. I want to thank Ubisoft for providing a copy of the game, but for now, let's get into it. It's tempting at first to just wander the streets of London and randomly scan citizens as you look for just the right recruit. But this can take a lot of time and there are a few things you can do to make the process more efficient. First, when you do see someone useful but you don't have time to recruit them, you can save them as a potential recruit with the press of a button. This will add them to your Teams tab so you can find them later on. Second, rather than prowl the streets all day, Bagley, the game's AI, will occasionally point out high-value recruits on your map with these bright green icons. But keep in mind that these recruits are only marked for a limited time, so if you see someone you're interested in, I recommend setting a waypoint, heading to their location, and at least marking them as a potential recruit so you don't lose them. Lastly, when you are wandering around and you see someone who clearly stands out, scan them to see what they can do. That's what I did with this street performer who I learned can evade any Albion pursuit by posing as a statue. Here's a strategy that can be used to make playing Watch Dogs Legion much more interesting. Some Londoners, when scanned with the Deep Profiler, which is unlocked via the game's tech menu, will show a list of known associates. And it can be very beneficial to mark residents who have a lot of associates as potential recruits. Here's why. As you wander the streets, the game's UI will point out if you encounter someone who is a friend of one of your team members or, and this is important, someone you've marked as a potential recruit. In this instance, I saw that this person in trouble was a friend of someone I had marked as a potential recruit. So I decided to rescue them, and in doing so, their friend decided to join my team automatically. No recruitment mission required. Now, I don't know what other consequences might come about from helping people who are associates of people you've already recruited, but nonetheless, this will happen a lot more frequently if you consistently mark people with one or more known associates. That said, this strategy can backfire depending on how you look at it, and that brings me to my next tip. Okay, so this is awesome. After I recruited that guy by saving his friend, I wanted to see what other consequences I might be able to trigger by messing with this spiderweb of known associates. So I scanned my potential recruits for people they knew, and that led me to this woman, who was the parole officer for one of my potential recruits. Well, when I found her, she wasn't in any trouble, so for the sake of research, the only thing I could do of any consequence was, well, kill her. So I did. And while the cops did show up, nothing else really happened. But then, a little while later, I received a mission request. Turns out that parole officer had a doctor who hates DedSec. And he somehow got wind that I killed his patient. So he kidnapped one of my team members and in this new side mission called a revenge mission, I had to save him. In other words, the people in this city really are connected and interacting with them triggers consequences that literally change your experience with the game. I have to hand it to Ubisoft for getting this right. The game's tech menu is where you'll unlock hacks, weapons, upgrades, and gadgets. Some of the most useful for me were the Spider-Bot's double jump, the invisibility cloak, and the attract hack which lures enemies to explosive traps you set. But the ones that became real lifesavers, and unexpectedly so, were the game's several drone and turret hacks. See, in this future world, drones are everywhere, and if you're defenseless against, say, an anti-terrorist drone, you're pretty much toast. But the initial hacks for chase drones, riot drones, turrets, and anti-terrorist drones allow you to easily disable them with just the press of one button and for just enough time to escape. Upgrade these hacks further and you'll actually be able to commandeer drones and turrets. 
It's also worth noting that if drones are giving you a hard time, disabled chase drones can be dispatched easily with a couple of melee attacks, and anti-terrorist drones, which are a bit tougher, can be destroyed using the DeadSec grenade launcher, which is also unlocked from the game's tech menu. Of course, this is much less stealthy than using the aforementioned hacks. One of the big new mechanics in Watch Dogs Legion is uniformed access. Uniforms now allow you to walk through certain buildings more or less undetected, and by far the most useful uniform is that of an Albion guard or employee. That's because Albion has occupied a ton of buildings in London and you'll constantly need to infiltrate them. Wearing an Albion uniform will even let you sneak through scanners that would otherwise set off an alarm. But you might have noticed you can't just recruit an Albion employee right away. That's because they don't like DedSec, as noted by this red thumbs down icon, and to recruit someone who doesn't like you, you'll need to unlock the deep profiler in the tech menu. This lets you access certain recruitment leads that once completed will persuade your once enemy to join your cause. Now, you will recruit an Albion guard as part of the story, but if you want to explore more freely early on, unlock the deep profiler, then find an Albion guard or employee. A good place to look would be one of the many Albion recruiting stations around town. First off, I found the Spiderbot to be hands down the most useful gadget in the entire game, but its uses go beyond the obvious. First off, you deploy your Spiderbot by tossing it on the ground, but what the game doesn't tell you up front is that you can throw it pretty damn high much higher than it can jump even after you equip it with the double jump ability. So when you encounter an enemy stronghold that's inaccessible via the ground, or you see a collectible that's high in the air, often tossing your spider bot upward is the easiest, if not the most readily apparent, solution. Second, since it's mainly used as a reconnaissance tool, it was easy for me to forget that the spider bot can also turn into an electrified facehugger. Yes, this has been featured in the game's marketing, but the game itself didn't have a tutorial, at least not that I saw, that showed me how to shock people in the face, and I was at least five or six hours into the game when I remembered, oh yeah, I can shock people in the face. Okay, this might seem basic, but there are a few features on the minimap that the game doesn't explain, and knowing them might save you some time. First off, with all the tall buildings in London, environments can be very vertical and you might at least at first have trouble figuring out whether a destination is above or below you. Well, if an icon has one of these subtle up or down arrows, that indicates whether it's above or below you. Second, there are two symbols that aren't self-explanatory, at least they weren't to me. This symbol indicates items or safes that you can hack to add some money to your wallet, and these icons indicate platforms that allow you to summon cargo drones, which you can use to fly around at your leisure, but be warned, they are pretty slow. It should be noted that the construction worker can summon these drones from anywhere, but don't recruit one on your own right away. There is a story mission very early on where you recruit a construction worker. I've already mentioned the cargo drone, but one thing you might not suspect at first is that it can actually be one of the most effective stealth weapons in the entire game. You'll often see large explosive tanks and you can pick them up with your cargo drone by just hovering right over them. Then you can drop these tanks on bad guys, killing anyone in the blast radius. Do this from a high enough altitude and you should remain undetected, but even if you get caught, the cargo drone doubles as an escape vehicle. Combat in Watch Dogs Legion isn't exactly tough, but it can be tedious. Thankfully, you can make fights go by a lot faster by unlocking the Disrupt Hack. This will shock any enemy you target, causing them to stop whatever they're doing, even if what they're doing is fighting you face to face. So if an enemy is beating you down, just quick hack them with the Disrupt Hack, and then knock them out with a takedown. Basically, Disrupt lets you instantly win any one-on-one -on -one fight. If you don't want to spend a lot of time in melee brawls, and trust me, you don't, you'll want to unlock this hack ASAP. As you probably know, losing a combat encounter will send that recruit to the clink, and critical injuries caused by, say, falling off a tall building can send you to the hospital. 
But having a barrister on your team, that's a lawyer for everybody here in the States, will reduce your time in jail and having a paramedic will reduce your time in the hospital. This is valuable as your timeouts will normally last up to an hour, but these times, at least for me, were more than cut in half once I added these two members to my team. Also, per one of my previous hints, Bagley will highlight a barrister on your map whenever you get arrested and he'll highlight a paramedic whenever you get sent to the hospital. My advice is to immediately mark these recruits for later or recruit them on the spot. Oh, and by the way, paramedics can infiltrate hospitals the same way Albion employees can infiltrate occupied buildings. So there you have it. I hope you found this video helpful and maybe even fun to watch. Now, normally on this channel, I do preview related content, and that includes the weekly podcast called Preloaded, which I produce with fellow YouTuber JV. Every week, we talk news, opinions, and we give our hands on impressions for some of the biggest and most exciting upcoming video games. If you want to check it out, I've left the links in the description. And with that, I want to thank you for watching this entire video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to drop a like and share it with friends. If you want to keep up with me and see what I'm playing, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Until next time, I want to remind everyone to never stop questing.